so that might be. No. Uh, okay, so let's get started. Uh, today we're going to talk about windows and doors. And so in the section here, let me open up this one as well. So now we're, we're starting on a new, uh, two new modules, windows and doors. And so let's just start off at the top with windows. I want to start off with different types of windows that we have in a house. Uh, a single hung window, being that it is a window where only the bottom portion opens. And uh, so if I've got me a window here, and uh, so basically the bottom portion goes up and down and the top portion is fixed. It does not move at all. So that is a single hung window. And then going on, we have a double hung window, very much similar to the single hung window, except both pieces go up and down. Now, you know, just when a, a double and a single hung window, uh, I guess I could uh, write this a little bit better, couldn't I? So you can understand it. Hung. Don't ask me why I always write this direction. Of, it's weird. So, uh, so even in the single hung window, and the double hung window, you can have these without a tilt. And what I mean is, so if I'm looking at the single hung window from the side, when you go to clean it, this stash will pop out. All right, so this, that would be a tilt. And then of course on the double hung, both of these will tilt out for cleaning. And uh, these can actually uh, be removed fairly easily. So basically tilt them out. And then uh, when they're out, when they're tilted out, if you raise one side up, then it will just actually pop out completely. Now, I say it pops out. I didn't say how daggum easy it is to pop back in because it can be a pain to pop back in. And uh, uh, I mean, it will, but it takes a little bit of practice to get it in. The reason is if we look, I'm going to cut this and I'm going to look in the side of this window. We have a channel in which the windows uh, go in and inside of this is a mechanism that rotates and I'm going to blow that up a little bit and it has a little slot in it. This little slot will rotate in both directions and there's where the problem lies. So to get it to go back in, you've got to get it in this slot and if, if the slot gets turned like this, which when they're in, it doesn't want to slide very good. It's locked. It doesn't, it doesn't move. Or maybe it's the opposite way. When it's out, this does slide. Yes. But this one does not want to slide much. because, And so it's a little bit tricky trying to get them back in because this knob obviously has to go up and down to allow the window to work. So to get it out, obviously, you, you've got to be able to, you pull it out in this direction, and then you've got to tilt it in a direction so that you can get it out. And there's a sweet spot in there to get those things in and out. And they're kind of a pain sometimes. So, I mean, like I say, they can be done, but they are a pain. So let's uh, let's go back in history a little bit. And I want, to, I want you guys to meet a friend of mine, actually a former student, this is him. This is Andrew Wing. Some of you guys may have had him in class with you uh, in the spring. I believe he was in my estimating class or my 
blueprint reading class. I can't remember now. But Andrew Wing is the owner of Saving Old Windows, and he is uh, an, he's a whiz at these windows. And I want to show you some of these. So these are antique windows. These don't tilt. Uh, they just go up and down, and they use these weights. So the window weights like this, they're made of uh, lead. They have a pulley at the top, and... Uh, to, to operate these, they're a bit of a pain. There you see that pulley at the top. And uh, so you know, he's got it tied off so that the, the pulley don't fall. And if, if you let go of that pulley, that pulley is going to go all the way down to the floor here. So he's cut this out to where he can get to the pulley and put in new rope. A lot of times this rope will rot and break off. And uh, so... He is, uh, he's a, he, he is just, you know, an excellent person as far as knowing how these windows work. So he renovates them. He, he works on these windows. And I want to show you if I can find it. I want to look at the size of this freaking window. I mean, this thing is just unbelievable. So this was a house down in Georgia that he was working on uh, over the summer. And in, I believe it was Savannah. And in this, whatever town it was in, they had what they called a door tax. So for every door that you had on your house, you were taxed each year, uh, depending on how many doors you had. So contractors got really smart and they started putting these ginormous windows in with almost no, uh, no bottom on the, I mean, they went almost to the floor. And then that way people could actually walk in and out of these things and didn't, well, they weren't taxed because they weren't doors, they were windows. So uh, he worked on this and, you know, he was renovating them. Let's see if I can find the picture. I might have to go back to his site to find the picture. Yeah, I am going to have to go back. Um, so if you want to, you can send him a, of a uh, request. He just recently got married, so he's got his all his little dainty wife pictures in there. But I really wanted to show you what had happened to this house. Come on. Any other time I would get to everything. I don't know why I'm not finding it. Uh, let's see. Let me just go down through his right quick. His site. And it may have been under a different one, it may have been under what's called Saving the Little House. And because I'm run, everybody's running their oh, you know what? I'm not even on his page. I'm on my page. Damn it. Andrew Wing. There we go. So let's go through here. This is what he's working on right now. This, this uh, old building here, he's taking all these windows out. So last weekend, he took out all of these windows across the top and put all of that OSB in while he's renovating the windows by himself. So he's, uh, he's quite a remarkable person. And this is, you know, typical kind of jobs that he's worked on. So he'd done that two years ago. And he's pretty much uh, self-educated as far as doing these windows. And uh, it's he's a pretty amazing person when it comes to these. And that's, you know, he has actually saved some of those old windows. And this is him and his wife's uh, new house that they're building. And he has put the old style weighted windows in this tiny house. So they're really, um, actually, there's a couple of pictures. So there's, there's the weighted windows, the old weighted windows that's going to be in this tiny house. Uh, obviously, there's not going to be much um, insulation, but, uh, geez, I didn't realize he had had so many windows on here. I would have just tried to find that beforehand. Well, shoot, come on. Let me see if he's got an album. Maybe that's, maybe that's where I'm missing it. Photos, albums. 
uh, big little house. I believe this is it right there. Yes, it is. So this is that house that I was telling you about that has the huge windows in it. You can see the size of the windows compared to the door. And he's in the middle of renovating all of these. And uh, somebody else is doing the staircase. Look at this picture here. So here is six, eight, six foot, eight inches. And there is those monstrosity windows that he's working on. So what had happened was he was working on it and he went to lunch and lightning struck the house. And in a matter of 30 minutes, the house was completely and totally lost. He lost about uh, $2,000 worth of tools. And uh, I don't know how many hours he had had already because he had already renovated a lot of these lower windows and some of the upper windows as well. And it just broke his heart. And I was, it hurt me too, uh, because they had put so much work into this, uh, into this house. It was just phenomenal. And even on the second floor, you can see how huge some of these windows are compared to a door. And uh, so, you know, if you want to give Andrew a holler and see if you can friend him and follow him on his, uh, his endeavor to renovate these windows. It's really, really cool, the work that he's doing. So uh, those all are double hung windows. Most of the old ones, uh, some are single hung windows, but most are double hung windows. So then we get into arch windows. Arch windows are a fixed window. So really this shouldn't be called arch. It should be called fixed windows. Fixed windows do not move. They, they are they're stationary, they, they're fixed. The awning window opens up from the bottom and to the outside. And I'm gonna go down here, I'm gonna jump a couple of these and I'm gonna go to the hopper window. The hopper window very closely to the uh, awning window is a window that opens down from the top, but opens inside, obviously so that we don't get rain in here. So, you know, when we open the windows up from the bottom, then rain can fall on this and, and it doesn't go inside. Uh, generally, these have two types of mechanisms on them. They have a rollout uh, type uh, knob on them or they have a lever on it. So let me go over here and explain to you what a lever is. So we have, uh, like I say, you've probably seen these, you know, these little knobs on there that, you know, just, they just twist so that you can roll it out. But then sometimes, and I'll look down on this window here. So sometimes they have just a little lever, change colors here. They have a little lever that's underneath it. And basically it goes from one side to the other. And as you pull it over, then the window opens out. And these come in both uh, the hopper, the awning. Let's see, so awning. Hopper and casement. So you can actually get this these type of mechanisms on those three. Uh, now, what is a casement, you might ask? So a casement is just like a uh, awning and a hopper, except it opens like a door. So these are sorry, these are a casement windows and you can get them opening in and out. Most of the ones that open in just have this little lever where you can just, this or this latch, where you can turn the latch, open the window. If you're gonna go with, if, if it has this crank on it, most of the time they will crank out or lever out. So that is a casement window. Uh, back up here, let's see, let me go, yeah, okay. So uh, you have bay windows, which generally have uh, just three windows. It's, it's kind of like a 45 degree angle on most of them. You can get them custom, customized, uh, but if you buy the unit, it's going to be at a 45 degree angle. So you're going to have a window here, you're going to have a window here, and you're going to have a window here. Now, uh, and, and it generally has, you know, a little seat or something, depending on how high it is. If you get so high, then it becomes more of a desk or not a desk, but a, a shelf where you can put flowers and stuff forth. And you can, you can build these yourself. And that's what I did in my house. I actually have a portion of my house 
where I have installed just regular windows. And basically I have, uh, I just framed up and placed the windows in here. And the reason I did this is so that I could get a larger seat out of this. This actually is a seat. And then the bottom of the seat, this portion of it hinges open and underneath is where we carry, we keep all of our Christmas decorations and so forth. So you can buy it as a unit and it can be a, a built in. Either way. And like I say, when you're doing a built in, these are just regular standard old windows. There's nothing, nothing special about them. I went down to Lowe's and actually, no, I take that back. I took the original windows out of the house. Uh, so my, and these, these very same windows actually set in this wall here and uh, I pulled them out and built this and then basically just placed those windows right back into that opening. It's very simple, very simple. Uh, a bow window uh, is another one that could be built uh, rather than bought, but you can buy those. And so you've got the bay window and it's looking down and then you have the bow window. And again, you can buy these as a whole unit or you can build uh, these in between. Now, what I've seen, uh, so this can be, you know, a right good bit, you know, right good distance through there. So you're looking at an eight inch long brick there. So uh, let's see, eight, 16, 24, 32. So these are probably somewhere around two foot from center to center. So two, four, six, eight, ten. So you're, you're going to have to put a beam in here that is going to go, uh, it's going to carry the load basically all the way across through here on this portion of the house. Now it's not going to be curved. This will be this beam here will be straight or nail LV will uh, will be straight, but then you can build the uh, the bow in it. Another way of doing this is you can actually go in and put studs between these windows and that eliminates some of that big beam that is necessary. So you can actually make each, each one of these load points and then just regular, just install regular windows in between them. Either way works. <coughs> egress windows. I'm going to come back to egress windows a little bit. Uh, because they have to be sized a certain way. So I'm gonna talk about those a little bit more. What I do wanna talk about is these little places here. This is called a window well. And a window well basically just does nothing but hold the earth back so that it doesn't pour into the, to the window there. Uh, and you can still, in some fashion or other, still be able to get out. So this happens a lot when basements are built uh, in, in areas where the ground is fairly flat and you can't slope it. Uh, so, you know, here in Western North Carolina, obviously we have uh, most of our earth is like this. So when we build our basement in our house, we'll have a daylight wall and, you know, we can install that window there and we don't have a problem with it. But in places where the ground is fairly flat and people want a basement, then in order to put that window in, then we have to put the window well in. And these window wells have to have a drain out. Otherwise, these will fill up with water and it'll pour in the house. We don't want that. That'd be bad. Garden windows, obviously, uh, are, you know, they have their own, the name uh, means everything. It's very much like a, uh, a, bay window, uh, except it's it gets everything out and you have this portion of glass on the top so you can get more visible sun into these uh, areas. Now, this is probably not something that you would want to put on the south side of the house because it's going to grab sunlight throughout the year and it's going to get very hot in the summertime. 
These windows also are designed so that they can open up from the side so you can get cross ventilation in here. But these are very nice if you're into gardening or plants and you got uh, a lot of times you see these in a kitchen. They put these behind a kitchen sink so that they can put their herbs in it. So when they're cooking, they just have uh, their fresh herbs readily available. Glass block is uh, a type of window that is, is very similar to the uh, fixed window. Each one of these little bitty blocks is an individual piece. And uh, you, know, you can get those at Lowe's easily. Uh, they, they sell them. Glass. Now, you can also find glass block at craft stores too, but they are not the same thing. These type of blocks that you buy, the glass blocks that you buy at Lowe's are sealed. They, they are completely sealed glass. They don't have a, they don't have a seal in them by any means, but they are, the air that's in there is completely and totally sealed by glass. So, uh, the air that's in there is sealed air. And if you remember, I think it gives us a 3.65 per inch R value, which is actually better than some of these other windows that you see. Uh, you know, a half inch double pane glass might give you uh, a two and a half, maybe an R3, but the glass block, because it's uh, four inches thick, then three point, uh, Let's see, three, come on, come up. 3.65 times four, that'll give you an R14 out of that block right there. So you're not gonna be able to really see adequately out of them. Even these, you know, they have a little bit of marring in there. They're not perfect. The reason that the, they do that is so that you can put these windows in a bathroom uh, or in a bedroom in this case. Uh, it's not a ventilated type a glass window. You can't open it. Uh, it allows light to come in, but doesn't allow peeping toms to see in. So that's, uh, and plus it gives you a greater uh, R value as well. But now, again, I'm going to come back to this, this egress window. They've got this in a nice pretty bedroom, but this window over here, it better be aggressible. And then lastly, you've got the jealousy window. Jealousy windows, um, I don't know how to put this any better. They're the worst type of windows that you could probably ever have anywhere because they don't seal. You can't get these properly to seal. So where are they used? They're probably used in a tropical setting like Florida, uh, Central America, Honduras, Can uh, Canada, not can definitely not Canada, Cuba, and places like that where you don't have to worry about cold temperatures. And uh, in these places, so they'll they'll they can put them in this other wall that's over here. And they can open these up and they get cross ventilation very well into this. Now, another drawback of this is it's hard to put a screen in these type of windows. The screen must go to the inside, which means that if you want to open it, these little crankouts have to be. You got to be able to have a place for those crankouts to go. So screen windows are very difficult to get in a jealousy window. Uh, I've only seen a couple of jealousy windows in my entire life. They were used, they were installed in the 50s. They were probably uninstalled in the 70s or 80s uh, just because they're, they are terrible. Picture windows is another fancy word for a large fixed window. Uh, these type of windows really need to be tempered, meaning that when they break, they break into very, very small shards. Uh, for instance, uh, 10 window broken. So show you a picture of this. So when they break, they break into these very, very small pieces and uh, they, you know, they're not going to cut you. So, or they, they will cut you, but not very much. So there's a, you know, if we've got a regular window and it's uh, it's going to crack all the pieces, you got a tempered window, then it's going to break into these very small pieces. And so this can cut you very good. 
and these cannot. So let's go back over here to Andrew's place here and let's look at this big window again that, that, uh, that he was showing. Where's that one picture? Well, there was a picture of him standing in the window. That was on his business page. Was it? Okay. Yeah. Not what I want to do. Posts. Where do you get to his home? There you go. Saving old home. Old windows. Um, so let's look at this. There we go. Nope, not what I wanted. Oh, God. Yeah, there we go. So these windows, I can pretty much guarantee you they are not tempered. Now, one of the jobs that he has to do in renovating this is bring those windows up to code. So he has to take all of this glass out and put in tempered glass. Now, let's think about this. You got a party going on here. These windows are open. People are able to go freely in and out. And uh, or maybe one of them's half closed. Somebody's drunk, falls through it. Bam. Shot. They're dead because this thing broke into a guillotine and come down and just cut them right in half. Anybody seen the movie uh, Ghost? That's what happens to the bad guy in the end. Sorry to break the news to you. But uh, so all of these windows have to be uh, changed into tempered glass. Now let's look at another thing. The code says that any type of window where the bottom of the window, where the bottom of the window is less than 20, boy, that's the sorriest window I've ever seen, is less than 23 inches then the whole window has to be tempered. Why is that? Because old Jethro here, he's going to be a he's going to be at that party and he's going to be a drinking. And uh, I don't know what in the world I'm trying to draw here. Come on, draw me a person. There we go. Jethro's in here, and here is his knee. There's his foot. Don't make don't make fun of my pictures here. So there's his knees. And if he backs up to this window and this window catches him below the knee, then he's going to topple out. All right. So he, he bends at this point here and this, he's going to topple out. And then if this is not tempered, then there's that guillotine that I'm telling you about. It's going to come straight down on him, cut him right in half. So that is one law on the windows for temperedness. Now let's keep going on temperedness while we're here. So we have a, actually, let me just go over to CAD here and show it to you this way. So let's see if I've got it in here. Yes, I do. And I don't have it shown. Let me change this. I didn't realize that I'd done that. I just love always screw up when I find these screw ups when I'm on Zoom. All right, this window better be tempered because it's in a wet area. So anytime a window is within 36 inches of a shower or a potentially wet area, it has to be tempered. Cause old Jethro, he's gonna get out of the shower and he's gonna stand out here with wet feet. He doesn't have a, a floor mat on, he's gonna slip, and that elbow's gonna go through that window. So any type of window that has to be in a bathroom must be tempered when it is within a wet area or it's within 36 inches of a tub or shower. Now let's see, let's talk about over here. Let's talk about, well, while I'm here, let me go ahead and tell you about a safety window. So a safety window, safety, safety glass. Safety glass is very much like what the glass is, not what I want. Very much like the glass that you see in cars. This is, I wish I found this one to begin with. And now it's not gonna, yeah, let me see, open in new image. Oh.
Okay, so this is uh, annealed glass, which is just regular type of glass. Obviously, it breaks into shards. You got the tempered glass, which breaks into little bitty pieces, and you got laminated glass or safety glass. So your car has three of these. Well, yeah, probably your car does have all three of these type of glass in them. Where are they? So if you're looking at your car, you're looking, you're looking down on your car, and here's your car, and you have headlights. These headlights are made out of annealed glass. You have mirrors. Those mirrors are made out of annealed glass. In other words, these break, they make shards. Your side windows, and we're gonna make this a hatchback, your rear window are all gonna be tempered. So all of these are gonna be tempered here. And then your windshield across the front is going to be safety glass or laminated. So laminated glass has a plastic film that runs between two pieces of glass. I'm sorry, it has a plastic film surrounded by two pieces of glass so that when it breaks, then it doesn't shatter. It doesn't break at all. And you guys, I know you, you've seen those uh, uh, Terminator movies where they kick out the front windshield so that they can shoot better and see something. Well, it comes out all at one time. All school buses are this very same way here. You can kick out the whole glass in a school bus and uh, it is a laminated safety glass. Let me go over here to Let's go to, actually, I don't want to go there. I just want to open it up. I've got it in here. I'm going to go over to a Jailwin site. Jailwin is a particular company manufacturer of windows, and I use them quite a bit. So when you go to a manufacturer site, they will give you the sizes of these windows, and you can look through here and determine what sizes you need. <coughs> now, notice that it has an E1 here, E3, E4. That means that it is egressible. Look right here. Units with an E1 egress designation meet the five foot square, five square feet egress with a PD35 seal stop, but not with a, a different type of seal stop. So uh, what that means is if the, in your, in your bedrooms, all of your bedrooms have to be that egressible size. All right. So they have to meet that egress size in order to be placed in the house. Uh, so the bedrooms have to have a secondary uh, means of escape. So, and, and a lot of times the porch does not count. I don't know why they go out the door, they go off the porch, but uh, no, you got to go out a window. I don't know. I don't make the rules, but this actually has three ways of getting out. You've got going out through the main door and out the front door. You can go out through the porch or you can go out the windows. Even with this porch, I have to have egressible windows in there and they have to be sized in such a way uh, to be able to get out of the window. Now, if you're over in the, on the, uh, the code book, and if you plan on getting into going into this business very often, you need to have uh, access to this residential code. And uh, so let's see, building plan and windows let me just do a quick window and you should have all sorts of uh fall protection fall seals let's open up that one as well ten three ten three ten okay 
All right, so it gets into window fall protection. Uh, so you have windows, uh, operable windows with openings that will not allow a four inch diameter sphere to pass through it. Uh, so that is where the top of the seal is, uh, of the operational window is located less than, okay, so I was wrong. It's less than 24 inches and get this, about, this is 24 inches above the finished floor and then greater than 72 inches above the finished grade. So uh, there's a couple of little things that you have to uh, be aware of when you're ordering these windows too. And let me just go back to this site. Uh, so let's see if I can show you a picture of it. Not going to be very. Okay, so there's little devices. Nah, this is that's not what I'm wanting. There are little devices in which it allows windows to not open so far. And I'm not seeing it. Obviously, because the little itty bitty things that like punch out a little bit, like. Yeah. Yeah. Like, they look like oh those things suck so much my, my knuckles get skinned on those so many times yeah you know i don't have yeah. kids like why do i have to have those kids man i'm gonna try something with my phone here and see if i can i'm hoping maybe i can get in to both with my phone and on the computer so if i lose you don't go nowhere i'll be right back uh Okay. I got a go. Hang on. There. Now, can you hear me? Uh, stop sharing. Go to. How do I do this? I'm trying to, I want to show, I want to get on my phone so I can show you. Oh, I know what I got to do. I've got to release my, I got to release myself. Uh, make host. Yes. Okay. So now I'm host. Start video. There. Hey, look at there. Okay. So what I'm going to do, well, I was going to try to turn it around, but I can't see these little little things right here there so you open those up and then when I try to open the window that's that there's that six inch sphere there I can't I can't get my child's head through that and the child's not hopefully not smart enough to close those so that he can open it up now that's if this is 24 inches or below uh, to the to the finished floor. Does that make sense? Okay. So also, while well, I've got you here, let's. I wish I could turn this thing around. How can I? Oh, there it is. Huh? That way I can see you guys and see what you guys are seeing. So there is the safety device on these windows, and then here's that that device that I was telling you about that tilts it out so I can I can push both of those whoops and I can I can tilt this window out so that I can clean it uh, but then there is that little mechanism that I was telling you about that allows you to pull it uh, pull the window out so I have I would have to pull I'm not going to but I would have to pull one of these sides up uh, so that I can get it out but then when you put it back in make sure that you pull on it a little bit to make sure that it snapped all the way. Uh, one of the students in the in the uh, building science class this morning was uh, testing, doing a blower door test on his house, and he realized that this was not closed all the way. So, in other words, you know, it's colder and crap outside today. 
and the window was kind of like that. It wasn't, it wasn't hooked all the way. Also, while I'm thinking about it, notice that this is the hook on the bottom piece, and this is the hook on the top piece. So when they are snapped in and closed, even if I try to pull, even if I try to use this to open it up, it won't open until I actually push it up just a little bit. I get it off of that ledge and then that way I can pull it open. So that gives you an idea how that works. So I, you know, this room here has tons of windows in it and, uh, and all of them have these little hooks on there. It's, it's pretty much standard through all of the, uh, Dog's going to bark here in a little bit because here's the UPS man. He's out there. He just got here. So uh, most of these are pretty standard uh, in all of the windows. That way you don't have to special order them and you don't have a problem with it. Now let's see if I can get myself back over here. Hey, that's pretty cool. <laughs> all right. Yeah, I knew that was going to happen. Hush, Gunner. Hmm. How do I give it back to myself? Shush. God, let me let you out. Come here. Go eat. There. Uh, I may have messed up because I don't know how to give it back to myself. Visual medium, visual background. Cancel. Hmm. <laughs> uh, students. Stop video, stop video and mute. I don't want to mute yet. Well, now ain't this something? How do I get it back? <laughs> this is a new one. I don't know how to get it back. Let me go over to participants. Maybe that's it. That's it. Okay, so more. Sorry, guys, I'm trying. If, if I'm afraid if I unmute myself, I'm gonna be in a hell of a fix. Oh, there it goes, Sensor. reclaim host. Now, I gotta, Get off of this from leave. There we go. We can't hear you. How about now? The students were given presentations this morning. And uh, so I was relinquishing my host to them so that they could present and you would not believe what I have to see. I mean, there's all these other little screens that you guys don't see. So when you're seeing me go all over the place with my cursor and stuff, I'm trying to shut these stupid things off. So I'm learning about this Zoom thing as we go along and I apologize. Okay, so that is, that's what I was trying to show you here, but these were just gates. Uh, so back over to the results here. So that's what they're talking about here. So anytime uh, that the window is less than 24 inches above the finished floor and greater than 72 outside, you've got to have something in there that prevents that four inch diameter uh, sphere. And a four inch diameter sphere is basically smaller than a child's head. And that's what that uh, is, is meant to be. Guards and fall protection. Well, I'm still not looking for, maybe it's under windows. Glazing, glazing. Oh, there it is, means of egress. So means of egress, hallways, headrooms, vertical, stairs, handrails. Guards, all of, it must be up at the top then. Um, not less than one exterior door shall be. 
well, while we're here, we're talking about doors. So a door, uh, uh, basically a front door, at least one door has to be not less than 32 inches uh, when measured between the face of the door and the stop. So that means when the door is open at 90 degrees, you have the door thickness. So you can't put a 32 inch door in there. You got to put a 34 or 36 inch door in there. Uh, oh God, where's that windows? Because the windows, all doors, stairways, the windows have to be sized to a certain way that uh, is five, I believe it's five square feet uh, but one size can't be less than 20 and another size can't be less than 24. Um, and that goes right back into the window fault protection. I'll find that and I'll post that on there. I won't waste your time on here now. But um, so anyway, so basically if you find these, you need to find out what is needed in your area because uh, an E1 might be okay for South Carolina, but an E3 uh, has to, is required for North Carolina. I don't remember which one, but it uh, that's what I was wanting to find. Uh, the you know the square footage is five square feet, but it has to be a certain length between here. So I'm thinking this has to be a minimum of 20 inches. This has to be a minimum of 24 inches. Uh, but if one of the two has to be bigger because 20 inches so 20 inches times 24 inches equals 3.3 uh, square foot. So obviously you can't do a 20 by 24. It, one of them, that's just the minimum size for one or the other, if that makes any sense. So um, if any of you've got, uh, resident or got codes next semester, this is how I use the code book. I don't buy a paper book. So uh, if, if you're planning on taking that, you can get to all these codes for free. You just can't copy and paste them. Uh, so, you know, you can go to this site, uh, ICC Safe, ICC Safe dot org. And when you get on there, you can, uh, you can find the codes for your area basically by going to build it, online building codes. And then, uh, well, I've punched mine enough to where North Carolina comes up automatically, but you may have to go, there's a map that shows up sometimes and you just click on North Carolina and then you can view it or you subscribe to it. So uh, I, I've already uh, I've already subscribed to the residential building and the regular one, but if I wanted to see these others, all I got to do is hit view, and then I can go down through here and I can view all of these. I just can't copy and paste them. Uh, so and and sometimes uh, you know, like for instance, the um, sometimes the yeah. See, if I wanted to use the if I want to use the search then I've got to be a subscriber too. So um, I promise you in the codes class, you need to have that search mechanism on there. You can hit control F and it will find certain things, but uh, you know, that's only if I'm on this page. So it will not look for door in any of these others. It'll only look on the page that I'm on currently. So that's the drawback on that. Uh, skylights, uh, skylights, I don't, I'm, round windows, it's just another type of, uh, uh, fixed window. So skylights, skylights are a window in a roof and these are terrible. Don't ever put one in your house. Why? Well, let's look at it. And, and the only reason I'm saying that is cause I'm a energy freak going to build a house and we're going to make it nice and super tight and so that the air conditioner doesn't run all the time and we're going to do a blower door test and we're going to do all sorts of nice efficiency things and then we're going to put a 
skylighting. So it is uh, June, North, Western North Carolina. Outside temperatures, 98 degrees. The old sun's up here just blistering in. And the first thing it's gonna do is go right in through this window here and shine on the floor. Well, the sun gives off UV rays and even with e uh, low E Mississippi, matter of fact, there's another term I need to talk to about, low E windows. Uh, low E Mississippi means that it stops the UV, it doesn't stop at all, and it's gonna heat this up, and then our air conditioner is gonna be running like crazy to overpower this heat that's coming in. Now, let's back up. And we're gonna change the temperature to negative 10 degrees. So it's in the winter time now. We have our heater going on and it maybe we've got, uh, you know, maybe we've got radiant floor heat or something coming out of this thing. And well, let, let me let me just let me go back and do it a different way. You want to take a bath. And you go to fill up the bathtub with all that nice warm water, but you didn't put the plug in on the bottom. What's going to happen? where well, you're gonna lose all your water down that drain, right? Guess what? This works just the opposite. If you don't put a plug in this, all of that heat is going to just radiate right through that thing and out the roof, okay? Cold air pushes down because of its gravity and pushes hot air upward and it's gonna go through the least resistant hole in there. Now, remember that I told you that windows are generally somewhere around 2.5 to 3.5 R value. So by law, your, your ceilings have to be an R30 to an R38. So what you have here is equal to the same thing as here. So keep that in mind if you ever decide you wanna put some, uh, some skylights in, not a cool thing. Now, if you, if you have a passive solar house, let's say for instance, we, we will, I will, I'll, I'll talk about the positive effects of this. Let's say that you have, you've built a house and it is passive solar. you have a skylight in there. But inside of this skylight, it has one of those little solar shades in there that can be closed. <clears throat> so in the summertime, we can open up a window down here and we can get some nice, cool 98 degree uh, temperature air in here coming in with bringing, also it has its 90% relative humidity into the house and it's going to flow upward and the hot hottest air of 108 is going to flow out through the roof and we can get some sort of airflow in this house. Winter comes down and we're gonna take some, uh, we're gonna close this little screen here Hopefully it has a reflective cover uh, color on it so that uh, any, any of the, the sunlight reflects off of it. And we'll close that during the day in the summer. Uh, and then in the winter time, we are going to do a little bit of house maintenance and we're gonna cut a piece of uh, insulation board and we're gonna put in that thing. How many, how many people's gonna do that? Negative three people are gonna do that. That's how many people's gonna do that that just don't happen. Uh, so that is, that's the positive of that. So if you, if you do it right, you can, uh, and I know I'm being uh, very facetious on this. I'm not a big fan of skylights at all. They're pretty, but they're inefficient as crap. Sliding windows, uh, sliding windows are great. Uh, you can get a four, 
foot by four foot sliding window and it is egressible from Lowe's for about <coughs> probably about $150. So they they can be, a, you know, an egressible window can be affordable. These windows that I was showing you down here, they're probably three, four hundred dollars a window. This is uh, well, we'll talk a little bit more about piece uh, designs and so forth here in a minute. Now, I'm sure you guys have heard about storm windows. This is a picture of a window that does not have storm windows on it. Storm windows. So storm windows uh, are, well, yeah, let's use that picture right there. So a storm window in the, teens, 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, and into the 1960s, they were putting in windows that were single pane and were very inefficient. So you could buy these aluminum storm windows to put directly over top of your window. And I'm, I know you guys have seen these. And matter of fact, here is, an, uh, here is an older version of that very same thing that hangs in there and then has a little hook that pulls it down in the middle or in the bottom to keep it shut. But, the, you know, these were, these were everybody's dream in the 70s and uh, 60s and 70s because basically what they done was they took a single pane window and made it a double pane window. What is so special about a double pane window? Well, it, uh, it holds air. So this would not necessarily be a sealed thing. Let's see. Let me just draw the, so this is the, this is the old window. We'll start with the old window. This is the double hung uh, window that Andrew's been working on. And we're going to come in here and we're going to put this new fangled aluminum, uh, storm window in there. So now we have taken a single window, which has an R value of, of maybe 0.3. I mean, it's just crazy. We can look it up on the R value table, but it's just very, very low because glass is an, a, uh, it is a, not an insulator. It's not an insulator. It's a conductor. So glass is a conductor. And by putting this other screw, um, storm window up here, then now we're creating a place where some sort of insulated air is, is in between here. Now, let's think about this. Summertime, Mr. Sunshine is just beating itself down in here. I have seen this happen, that it gets so hot in between these two that one of these two windows breaks. Most of the time it's the outside one because it gets the hottest. Uh, I have seen people take uh, one-way glass film, which is like mylar, and they've placed it right here on this glass, which actually, uh, you know, reflects this back outside. But what happens is this gets stuck in between here and this gets very hot. And I'm talking, you know, 180 degrees plus, And all of this wood starts to dry rot and the whole thing just breaks down. So this storm windows were great for what they were meant to be, but we've kind of abused those in the past and it's not been a good thing. So let's talk about the windows that we have today. So when I was showing you, I have an all vinyl window. In other words, it is it's all vinyl from front to back. And the, uh, the sashes are vinyl. And then of course we have double pane windows in here from the factory that are sealed. So this is a sealed airspace of 3.65 per inch, but you know, we're talking a half an inch. So we're, we've get, still getting um, 
three two five. 1.325, an R 1.325 out of these windows here. Uh, so you can fill these windows with uh, argon gas. You can uh, have them uh, evacuated. Uh, so to improve this, but what happens is you generally end up um, getting the, the gas leaks out or the, the vacuum leaks and you get moisture up in it and that's a problem. If they're made really, really, really good, then, uh, so I'm gonna blow this up here a little bit. So I've got my panes of glass here and you can do this yourself really uh, if, you, if you do a good job of it. Basically just put you a big old gasket of caulk or something in there. Uh, a lot of times this is a rubber gasket that's been glued into place and uh, as long as you use a good glue, you can make your own windows. And as long as these don't, the seal doesn't break, then you have uh, air that's going to be trapped in here that's going to work as an insulator. So that is a double pane window. And you can also get them in a triple pane window. Transom windows. Uh, transom windows uh, go above a door. So let's, I want to show you, kind of go into history a little bit on a transom window. Transom windows were used, there's a perfect example. Transom windows were used in uh, apartment buildings in the, uh, in the old day, I mean, the old days, I'm talking, you know, teens, 20s, 30s, when air conditioning was not available but the door needed to be shut because you needed to have privacy, but you could open these transom windows to let uh, light, or excuse me, to let uh, air in so that you could open these windows in here and you know you get circulation through the house. So transom windows actually uh, were originally used on the interior of a house. But as, as you're gonna see here in just a second, Transom windows, if I, got, I can't remember if I used a transom window on this house or not. Uh, let's see if I used it on this house. No. I've had one just recently. I'm trying to think, look at my board. Man, Heath Moody is just blowing my phone up right now. This is a transom window. So it's a window that is up higher, not necessarily over a window or door, and there's two of them there, but let me show you where they go. Maybe. That's the basement. All right, so th this is wrong. This says an awning window, but it's actually a transom window. Uh, so I can put this in the bedroom up high and I can, it doesn't have to be frosted. It can be open completely and nobody's going to be able to see in. You see these a lot in uh, bathrooms. So, and I was thinking maybe this was put in a bathroom. So I could put a transom window in this bathroom here. Uh, it doesn't open. Uh, I can get it to open. I can obviously put a, a, an awning window in that's up high and call it a transom window so that I can open it. Uh, but that way, I don't have to worry about anybody looking in uh, into the bathroom. When we get into these uh, new developments uh, that's going up right now, or, well, it doesn't have to be new, but uh, as you know, around Asheville, houses are dang near pretty much on top of each other. And so when you're, you know, you're in a housing development or just in a neighborhood where you have 
houses that are way up high and then you've got houses below this and obviously I cannot draw today you have windows or, or houses that are below this then you know you can put these transom windows up way up high and and well that this guy's probably still can see into but you know what I'm saying you, you get the idea so uh, the transom windows go up high and that way you can have nice clear uh, light and and of course transom windows are put in above doors and windows too so uh, you can get you can order door units or window units with transom units already connected to them custom windows dear god i hope you never build a house like this uh anybody familiar with the glass house i believe this is in pennsylvania the glass house uh, not that glass house there we go that's the house i'm talking about so this is the glass house and i like I say i think it's in pennsylvania so uh somebody decided to do this glass house and it was um who did it uh johnson house who designed by philip johnson okay and it was you know it was a it was a good thought but uh the inhabitants of the house even though the air conditioning is on inside the house and it's a cool uh 68 degrees inside the house it's blistering outside and gives them they make they sweat in the, in the summertime in the winter time the house is a nice toasty 72 degrees there's snow on everything of, around and the people freeze so it's it was a you know it's kind of a psychological thing but uh, the glass house so no it's in Connecticut it looks like uh, Connecticut yeah that's Connecticut right Maybe. So anyway, you get the idea that, you know, sometimes glass can work against you on that. Windows over time. Now, look at this. Now, here, this is another one. So this is a greenhouse built around a house. Uh, so the humidity is terribly high. Uh, and sometimes, well, probably most of the summer, unless they've got opening somewhere, then it's going to get very, very hot. Uh, but in the wintertime, well, this is in Sweden, so I guess it stays cold there uh, pretty much year round and it would be okay to have something like that there. But that's a pretty good way of using windows in that as well. Uh, so what are windows made out of? And so let's talk about that for a second. Window material types. Uh, so you've got wood, you've got uh, vinyl, you've got fiberglass, you've got aluminum, you've got wood clad, and then you've got the composite. So obviously you, you understand what a wood window is, you understand what a vinyl window is, what a fiberglass window is, and an aluminum window. But what about a wood clad? So a wood clad window is a very unique type of window. So if we have wood, if we have a wood window, uh, these are great, they look pretty, but on the outside, this is the, outs this is the outside, the sun is gonna be coming in there and, and rain is gonna be coming in there and it wood cannot uh, constantly put up with this if it's not painted, stained, or, and even the stain doesn't help 100%. Paint is a maintenance headache. So you've got to, you know, you've got to paint that house at least every two years. So let's go with a wood clad window. What is a wood clad window? So a wood clad window means that it is a wood window that has plastic or vinyl cladding around it on the outsides of it so the inside of it looks real pretty we can uh, you know we've got all the the wood uh, the look you know all of the grain can be seen on the inside of it but outside of it it is maybe a particular color 
uh, generally it's white, but uh, you know, you can, let's say we're gonna, we want purple. Where's my, there it is. We'll say we want this outside to be purple. So, you know, we can paint this or not paint it, but we can order it in purple and it comes and that plastic, even if it's scratched, it's still going to be the same color uh, if it's scratched. So this is through and through the same color from one side to the other and uh, is a really uh, good protectant on the window, uh, the window frame, and uh, it is, is the best way to go. They're a little bit more expensive. Now, what's so good about wood is you're going to get your greatest R value out of the thickness of that wood. That wood is 1.25 per inch, and it's a lot better than vinyl and, and uh, oh my God, don't even think about using metal. Uh, metal is probably the absolute worst that you could ever use as far as uh, thermal protection on that. Uh, steel, you know, steel doors and stuff like that, if, um, if you're getting a steel door, then make sure that it is foam filled with insulation. So let's see, composite. Composite is, uh, you know, it's, it's a plastic wood uh, type stuff, just like the wood that you buy for treks and so forth. And it's gonna cost you out the yin yang, uh, but it is, it, like say this thing says, it's energy efficient and environmental friendly because it uses plastics uh, to help make this material and uh, it doesn't uh, rot and, and warp and so forth, where you're going to get some of this out of the others. I'll post this. This is a nice little thing here. Uh, so you can kind of look through this about the pros and cons of the different uh, materials on there. So I'll post that on there where you can get to that. Uh, yeah, I know. Just add another damn piece of material for us to look over early. Yeah. So um, sorry, guys. And, uh, you know, this, this information is, is just great. And I know you ain't got a whole lot of time to look over it, but anyway, it's there. So let's take a little bit of a break and uh, let my voice calm down a little bit. Let me get something to drink. And then we're going to come back and talk about DOAs. So I'll give you about 10 minutes. Uh, are you familiar with the evolution door? I don't think that I am. Yeah. If you get a chance, uh, look that up. It's a door that kind of folds in on itself and it doesn't really open out. It just kind of moves to the side. Um, but it's a pretty interesting concept. Yeah, yeah, there it is. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Sure. Yeah. yeah. I just think those are neat. No, I wasn't familiar with the term. Very cool. Yeah. Yeah, I'd be interested in knowing what the mechanics of it are. I don't, I don't think I have <laughs> yeah, figured exactly. out. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so let's get back started. Let's talk about some doors. And I'm gonna start out with exterior doors. And uh, in the beginning, we had doors, uh, you know, pretty much like this that were just a six panel door. And <clears throat> then we've got, you know, then we've, you know, really got elaborate uh, doors that uh, we use uh, for generally what they call an entry door. So it's it's the front door basically is what an entry door is. And in this case, you have a uh, panel door. It's a six panel door with uh, side lights and a transom window on it. So this is, uh, this is pretty cool. Now, the drawback on this is these little panels uh, are not very, um, insulated. 
And uh, one of the, matter of fact, one of the uh, videos that, uh, or one of the uh, presentations that we did from this morning in the building science class, they shot this with a thermal imaging camera and you could see just how, how bad the, uh, the image was. Let me find if I can see this uh, thermal image of a panel door. Well, thermal image of a panel door and I don't, yeah. Not seeing thermal imaging. Let me just say thermal image of a door. Let's see what we get there. There we go. So this is what you get from a panel door. Obviously, this is the much colder uh, portion of the door, and it's letting air or letting cold air uh, seep into the house. Uh, so the panels can be very, very uh, thin section of a panel door. Uh, so here is kind of, you know, what looks like a panel door here. And you can see this portion right here is probably not much more than a quarter of an inch. So uh, if, you know, if you're getting 1.25 uh, R value per inch times 0.25, that's the kind of R value you're getting out of that little portion right there. So 0.3125. So it's not very good at all. Uh, again, wood doors have, uh, you know, they've been around forever. We have uh, what's called half glass doors, or this is a actually a quarter glass door. And uh, this, this, even though it's three quarter glass, we call it an entry door. Um, there's a half glass door. Whoops, didn't want that. This is a half glass door here. You can kind of get, let's see if I have that already out. Yes. Okay, so uh, we have half glass doors. We have, these are also quarter glass doors. And uh, we have what's called a six panel uh, door with light, and it's L-I-T-E, not L-I-G-H-T. So, um, and then of course we have full glass doors. And so you have several different full glass doors. And I guess there's something that I should talk about there as well as the, is that glass. Let me, let me go back up here. And so the glass in the door and the windows, uh, there's two definitions of that. So we have that door, uh, and this kind of goes back to old days, we've got the door and we've got that full glass in there and windows are the same way. And then we have these mullions and there are muttons sometimes called that separate the glass. Now, you know, up until about uh, the 50s and 60s, each one of these glasses were its own piece of glass. It, uh, you know, if, if I hit it with a baseball, it would break just one piece of glass and not the whole thing. So this is called true divided light. And this is L-I-G-H-T. Uh, true divided light, meaning that each one of these is a separate window. Now, uh, if you don't have this, then what you have, and if we look at it, if we're going to cut through it and look at it, we got a great big piece of glass here, and then these little muttons here are just, uh, they're just snapped on, they, they snap on and give you the appearance of a true divided light, but if you hit, if you break this with a baseball, the whole thing's shot, so uh, that's the difference. Now, what's bad about these is they're very thin. Generally, it's a single pane of glass. Uh, the, 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 the pro of it is you break this, you only have to replace this. Whereas in this one, you've got uh, an insulated glass. So you've got some dead air in there 
some sealed air that's not going to get out. You've got a little bit of insulation in there, but if you break one, you're going to break it all. So that's that's kind of the pluses and minuses of that glass that's in these windows and doors. And you can get these with matching skylights or side lights rather. So, uh, you know, full glass uh, side lights. Uh, a lot of times these type of glasses, if they're full glass and they're an entry door, then they might be frosted or floated even. And that's something else I didn't think about to talk about. So let's, let me go back here and talk about float glass. And again, windows and doors are done this way. Float glass is, um, well, here, here's a video on how it's made. As you know, glass is made of silica, sand, and it's put through the furnace, heated up at, according to that, it's 2,900 degrees, and flows onto a tin bath. Now, in the, and originally in the old days, it was floated on water. This tin does not ripple like water does and so that it can get a very smooth a very good smooth piece of glass out of that and in the uh, uh, in the float glass and you can actually you can still today buy this float glass I'm gonna get off of that um, so you can still buy float glass wish I hadn't done that uh, let me just go over here and float glass has a certain uh, um appeal to it it's it's beautiful glass these are probably all tin floated hmm. but in the original glass they're not perfect Let me go back and try this again. Okay, so you kind of get this effect. Now this is this is an extreme, but uh, that's still an extreme. It's you can still see through float glass, but it will have some waviness to it. Again, this is an extreme. Uh, you'll see a lot of float glass on older uh, buildings, especially that are, that might be uh, historical. Uh, that was the only thing that they, they had. And one, one thing also to say about glass, uh, and, and by the way, uh, glass in the code book is referred to as glazing. All right, so glass is equal to glazing. Uh, and one piece of glass is considered a pane. P A, is it spelled the same? I don't think it's, I, no, it's not spelled the same. P A N E, there, pane. Pane of glass. So, uh, Let's let's go back in time. We're going to take uh, actually let's not go back in time. Let's go to Boston, and uh, let's go to one of the original buildings up there, and we're going to look at a piece of glass, uh, and we're going to pay really close attention to it. Glass is a solidified liquid, uh, and so if we were to able to to basically open that up, put a finger on one side and a finger on another and run it down the glass, you're gonna find that this piece of glass, and this is exaggerated, that the bottom of the glass is gonna be thicker than the top. Because it is a solidified liquid, it continues to move. So gravity is pushing this glass downward and the majority of the glass will settle down here at the bottom. And in some cases, 
uh, where you have moldings that might be at the bottom of that glass. The glass has come down. Let me change colors there. The glass has come down and you will see a very slight um, little hump in it there. It's probably not that uh, noticeable. You've got to really look at it, but because, like again, because this is a solidified liquid, then it will continue to move over the years. And it's really cool to see. I've, I've been able to see some of those old buildings and they are really impressive. And, you know, to, to think that the glass has survived that long without being broke. So uh, that is, uh, that's glass for you. So originally it was a float glass. They floated it on water. And uh, it, again, it's, this is uh, a little bit aggressive uh, because they tried to get it as smooth as they possibly can. And the one way that you can actually see that it's water uh, or that it's uh, float glass is if you just move your head back and forth while you're looking out the window and you can see the glass ripple. That is a good indication that it is a, a water float glass. Uh, da, 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 da. So let's see. Back over here, we got the again. We've got the panel door. You got a six panel door. You got a six panel with two lights. Uh, you got a two panel door. You got a three panel door. Um, and and they just you know go on and on and on. Different panels ha can have different looks. They can have different designs on them. So uh, you know you, the 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 design is endless. You can just go on and on and on. So we have pocket doors, bifold doors, sliding doors, accordion doors, swing doors. Uh, let me go over here to this one. Yeah, so here you've got, uh, this is looking at it on a plan basically. So uh, you've got pocket doors, you've got double doors, double pocket doors. You see those in uh, the big fancy houses uh, in the big movies, you know, they'll come, come into the library and they'll slide a double door out. Uh, a double slider just means that it can slide both ways and a triple slider, of course, it, you've got three sliding doors in there as well. Uh, an overhead door. So an overhead door, an overhead door, the actual term for an overhead door is upward acting. So uh, you can have several different types of upward acting doors. In this case here, um, this door here rolls up. So it looks like this. This is a roll up door. And so it just, you know, it spirals up into that. And then you have the sectional doors, which look like this. And they can go anywhere from two sections to, you know, in this case, it's a four sectional door. And, it, you know, back, I can remember it. I know it was, most of you guys probably don't remember it, but, uh, my garage door to my house when I was young was a single door. Uh, it was it was not a sectional door. It was an upward acting door. So you basically pulled on the bottom of this thing, and it would swing way out. And then it, you know, in its final resting place, it would be up here. But to get this to come out, basically, it would this would swing way out and then pull down uh, and there were some mechanisms in there that that allowed this to do that but that was an a that was a, a, an original overhead door like I say I remember it in my house uh, when I was young uh, I couldn't open it at, at all uh, where these uh, and you can and you cannot get a um, a door opener to open it either they are they're very very hard to get it to open um, and then but you know Upward acting doors come in all shorts, shapes and sizes. Uh, you see them a lot in uh, warehouses, uh, but then of course garages. This is an upward acting door, even though it is built to look like a swing door. Uh, this steel, had, you can see the sectional markings in it here. So it, it rolls up as well uh, in those sections. And again, you can get them in with uh, hinges on there to make it look like that it is a uh, what is called a carriage door, by the way. So this is mocking a carriage door, and it's nothing more than a double swing. Uh, a carriage door is nothing more than a double swing door that's just very big. Uh, so you can, you can, you know, this is a faux 
uh, carriage door, even though it's a, an upward acting sectional door. Bifold doors uh, are kind of a pain in the ass. Uh, they're mostly used in a um, closet setting so that you don't end up having the door swing way into the room. Uh, so if we were to do a, a bifold door, then generally it, you know, it has little movement uh, and it doesn't see if a swing door was to come in here, it would swing way out into the room here and be huge. Well, maybe not that big, but you get the idea. Uh, you know, it's, it's huge. It takes up room. It takes up, you know, uh, real estate in the bedroom where just a uh, bifold door would only take up a foot because generally these are 12 inches and uh, you can get them in eights and twelves. And uh, you can do, uh, basically you can do a single bifold. All right, so uh, in the single bifold, it just goes in one direction and, you know, two foot wide. Uh, I think you actually can get them bigger. So you can, I think you can get them all the way up into about a foot and a half uh, in size, but uh, they, they don't work very well. You've got to, You've got a pivot point top and bottom on this side, and then you've got hinges across through here. This pretty much just moves back and forth uh, in a track that is running overhead. And uh, if you're not careful, you can pull them off the track. Uh, they break easily because most of the time they're louvered. Uh, when I say louvered, they've, they've got uh, the panels have been replaced with louvers just so that you get air movement through the closets and so forth. And you don't have any moisture buildup in the closets. Uh, I'm not a fan of them. My, my parents had them in the house here when I was young and uh, I was, you know, I was a kid and I was constantly pulling them off the track. So that's a bifold door. Sliding doors are another big popularity in the sixties where, uh, and, and you know, you could do that in a closet, um, and just have the doors that are passing each other. I used to have fun with these and getting hide in the closets. So this would, both of these would open back and forth. And uh, generally these are for interior purposes only when they're like uh, this. You can get them, and I'm gonna go over that in a minute. You can get them in an external like a patio door, but generally only one door moves. Um, the accordion door is another one of those kind of a pain in the butt type of door. Uh, the accordion doors are used uh, in places where we want to co uh, close off an entire room. So we could leave those open and have a nice big room in there. And uh, then, uh, you know, if we wanted to have breakout sessions or whatever, then uh, miss that one completely. We could uh, break these two rooms in half with an accordion door uh, that just goes out through there. I'm not, again, I'm not a fan of these unless it's in this, you know, using it for these these uh, uh, conference rooms where you can make them smaller. The swing door, obviously, you, you know, you understand what I'm talking about, a swing door, and there kind of gives you, you know, some differences in... Uh, in ways to, to make the uh, panels. In other types of doors, you can have a slab door uh, or multi-slab doors or, or barn doors, I've heard them called. But today, a barn door is more referred to as a sliding door, such as this one. This is a barn door uh, that works. So in a barn door, you have a rail that slides on the exterior of the wall or is mounted on the exterior of the wall. And these are not necessarily um, securable. So if you know you and mama wanted to get in there and do the hanky panky, uh, kids could probably come and open that door, no problem. And it, it just doesn't latch very well. Uh, the pocket doors are uh, another way that you can go into an interior door. 
and uh, this just disappears in the wall here. A lot of times you'll see this in closets and bathrooms where you're trying to save space uh, and eliminate a swing on it. Now, here's the drawback of this. There is the frame of this. And I would advise you that if you ever plan on putting in a pocket door, build your own frame. These can be bought at Lowe's. They are put together with uh, a staple gun. They're not very secure. They're not very strong. Uh, and, and don't do as Hurley did. And let me explain to you what I did. Um, actually, I'll, let's see if I can do this again without causing too much problems. Because uh, it's so much easier just to show you rather than talk about it and show you pictures. Don't forget I'll to move mute this yourself. right quick. Okay, can you guys hear me? Yes. Okay. But you can't see me. Nice door. Nice. Okay. All right, so let me go in here. And into our closet. Man, I hope my wife's underwear is all out of place. It's been hidden. So this is a pocket door that I have in my closet. Okay. I built the frame and I've got uh, oak trim around it everywhere and it just slides in here. So this is, this is the funny thing what happened. This is drywall. So I built the frame and I set the door in and I go over here and I start mounting the drywall with two inch screws. So the drywall is here and I got a two inch screw. So basically I screwed my door open or yeah, screwed it open. Not only, now wait a minute, hang on. Not only did I do it to this side, but my dumb ass come in here and doing it to that side too. So I just, I completely, totally ruined a good door that I had. And what I had done was uh, in the bathroom, you can see where I've, uh, I've basically, these are old doors. These doors uh, were the, on the original portion of the house. And I just basically reused the doors so I didn't have to buy new doors. So that's what I had done here. I had reused one of the doors, but then after I got through screwing it all up, I had to go buy me a new door. So lesson learned there, guys. Uh, if you're going to put up drywall, make sure that you use smaller screws that's not going to go into the door. So that's, that's you know. Tell me me. Sorry, come on, Toodles. So this is my office, which used to be a screened in porch. So I have two exterior doors here. <coughs> While I'm thinking about it, let me just go over here and think about, talk about this. So this is an exterior door. It is, uh, let me back up a little bit. So it's a half glass door, but it has the blinds on the inside. So this is, and if I can get it off, I can't get it off. That's a, th this is nothing but a magnet. So this is held in place by a magnet. And inside of this track here is another magnet so that I can open and close this and I can change the, the blinds in it as well. Now this is not, this one is attached but this one is not. It is only held in place because obviously there's nothing there. There's no track for it to go in. It is a magnet that is super stuck to that thing. So I, I didn't realize that until my son does, you know, he's playing over here playing with it one day and pulled the darn thing clean off. And I was like, oh my God, you broke it. 
but it just went back right back on because it's a magnet, fairly strong magnet. So you get an idea of that. Now this door here is also a half glass door. And these are steel doors. I bought the steel doors for security purposes, but they are foam filled. So they have foam in there. And this is what I was talking about. So this is, this is an all piece of glass here. And I just have this, these, these snap on or actually these screw in uh, mullions. So this whole thing is just one great big piece of plastic that just mounts on that. So if I break this, it's gonna break the whole thing. And so these are not true divided lights. Okay, am I back on the computer now? Can you guys hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Okay, good. But, I've got everybody's uh, screen turned off, and that's why I can't see you. If you're, you know, if you're going, I can't see you. So there is, like I say, there's that, you know, eighty-three dollars for that piece of junk right there, where you could probably, you know, you can buy your lumber. Well, I don't know, the lumber today is unbelievably expensive. So, and you know, you get your all your hardware and everything. And then you can pretty much just build it yourself. Okay, so sliding doors. Again, sliding doors are are sold as windows. They're, I'm sorry, they're made by window companies. So when you buy these, you can get these in all types of different uh, configurations. And a lot of these, because it has so much glass in it, a lot of them are made by glass companies rather than door companies. So when you go to buy these, like um, you wouldn't go to Weyerhaeuser to buy, you would go to uh, Pella or somebody to buy the, the doors on that. Uh, a French door is just a double swinging door. So if we're looking at it on a plan, um, the, find the, yeah, so, that would be a French door. So it's a double, uh, a double opening door. And those also can swing out. And something to be said about the, uh, let me go back over here and look at these swings. All right, so these are the way that the door swings. So how do you, is this a right or left-handed door? You put your butt, uh, you basically put your butt on the door on the hinge side and whatever hand the hinge is on that's the side that, that's the hand that the door swings so in other words this is a right hand swing so if i put my butt up against the door the hinge is going to be on the right hand side whereas uh hang on just a minute i'm in the middle of the zoom right now andrew comes in with a great big package uh so if we were going over here and I put my butt up against the door, then the hinge is on the left-hand side. So that is a right and left-handed door. Now, what about an, in, an exterior door? Let's see, is this one uh, garage? Yes, okay, so this is what is considered an outswing door. So it is a right-hand outswing door and they can swing interior and exterior. But if we're looking at this one, this one will be a left-hand door, this one will be a right-hand door. Notice that they're sized in feet and inches. So this number represents two foot eight inches from side to side by six foot eight inches tall. So it's a 2868 door. Uh, the windows, this particular company that are, yeah, this particular company that I draw with, it wants, he wants the windows also to be in feet and inches. So this is a 3046 window. But if you go back over to the windows over here, you'll see that the windows are actually sized in inches. So this is a 3356, 33 inches by 56 inch window on that. Uh, but like I say, this particular contractor wants all of his windows to be in feet and inches as well. Pocket doors, 
I'm running out of time really quickly here. Uh, sliding doors again are made, you know, unless they're a barn door, they are generally made by the glass company. Okay, so you have solid core and hollow core doors. In this particular uh, instance here, you have a door. Now, this is exactly like the door that I was showing you in the bathroom and the closet. It has a uh, it has a skin on it, and it's Luon, which is a very uh, thin piece of plywood that's made out of a species of wood called Luon that uh, emulates mahogany. And then on the inside of the door is nothing but cardboard. So you have this frame that goes around there, and then you have this cardboard that interlocks just to uh, keep these two apart. Now, you've, I know you've seen, you know, on YouTube and Jackass and all of these others where they go flying through a, a door like this. There's nothing there, basically. It's very easily to punch through it. Uh, if you punch through a, a door like this where you have solid... Uh, wood blocks in there you're going to you're you're probably broke your hand on that thing so uh, these are very lightweight they're inexpensive i think you can get them at lowe's for about 25 30 40 dollars they're not very expensive at all and you can get the pressed uh six panel door look at it as well so let's go over to lowe's for a second and uh, i'm just going to type in door and let's see what we get i should have said interior doors so exterior doors, interior doors. So the interior doors, so you can get wooden slab doors. So you've got the, the barn look, uh, and then you can get, uh, you can get the, the six panel uh, door, this is solid wood. These are, you know, these are a lot more expensive, $121, what size was that? Uh, that was a 30 inch door for $121. So let's go and find us just a, a slab door. Well, that's a pre-hung. That's why that one's so much. Let me just go in here and say door slab. Okay, so right there you go. You can buy this one. Uh, this is a 36 inch uh, or a 3068 uh, flush door for 50 bucks. Man, they've got expensive. And uh, you can get the, uh, the six panel. Now, this six panel door here is it's molded composite door. So basically it's uh, masonite that has been molded into this. And, but it still has uh, cardboard inside of it with just a wood frame around the outside of it. And then it's usually it's got wood right here to, uh, to strengthen the doorknob as well. Kind of give you an idea there. So pre-hung doors, let's see if I can look up uh, pre-hung door section. Nope. Hmm. I don't see what I'm trying to see here. I don't know where else I can go. On this plan here, it shows a pre-hung door frame. <clears throat> See how um, these two, you have a tongue and groove portion of the frame. So this comes from the company already. The, the door is attached to the frame with hinges. Uh, the molding is already attached to both sides, you really have the brick mold that will be on one side of an exterior door. And, uh, but if it's an interior pre-hung door, you're gonna have this type of, or something similar 
uh, to both sides of this. It comes apart in the middle and you can put it in place and uh, then put you in some nails, shim it up, put you in some nails and you're good to go. Uh, they make hanging doors very, very simple uh, and you still get a very good look out of it because the joint is behind the door stop. And that's what this is called here. So this is the door, this is the door stop, this is the jam, and then you have the trim. So if you hear somebody say, I'm gonna case out a window, I'm gonna case out a door, this is what they're talking about. They're putting in that jam and the head and the seal on the window, but this is the casing and this is called trim of the windows and doors. This uh, particular type here would be a, uh, this is not pre-hung. This would be a site built door frame. Uh, it's still practiced quite a bit. And so you basically have to shim it out. You put your, your, uh, your casing in there, put your door stop on, hang your door, do your trim, a lot more work. This would, this type here would take you maybe uh, well, I think the estimating program actually says that it takes you 45 minutes a door to put it in. Uh, you could probably cut that down and put it in about 30 minutes, really. Uh, this type of door here is going to take you a couple of hours to put in because you've got to, to uh, cut all the wood precisely, mill it in into a particular shape. And when I say a particular shape, so uh, when you're milling the doors uh, to be to, to build them by hand, you, you're, you've, you're making a little slot in the head of this. And then the head casing goes in there, something like that. So it takes a little bit of time because you've got to mill this out. You don't just slap it up there and otherwise you're gonna have joints that's gonna show up. And this would go all the way, of course, down to the bottom. Uh, and then, you have to, you generally have what's called a butt hinge. So a butt hinge fully opened looks like this. You have the barrel in here with the, the different um, sides on it. You got the, the uh, blade here with the holes in it. And so the door, you have to route out a space in the door for this. It's called a butt hinge because it goes on the butt of the door. So if I'm looking down at a door and the door opens like this, it swings open, this is the butt. This is the head. This is the foot. So kind of give you an idea of what different portions of the, of the door is called. Also, if you have a door that has uh, panels in it, You've got the panel, obviously. But the up and down portions are called uh, rails. And the side to side portions are called styles. And I might have that backwards. Stales, styles, S-T-A-I-L-S, is that right? I don't know. So um, that gives you an idea there. So in with the butt hinge, you also have to come out and route out a place in the jam for this to sit too, because when it's closed, it has to sit, there's your barrel, it has to sit like that. It has to come completely closed uh, when it is in the doorway. Nope, thinking that was a picture of the pre-hung, but it's not. Okay, so just remember that you can get hollow core doors. This is considered hollow core, or if you buy a, um, a, a fiberglass or metal door to go outside, it can also come hollow. If it has spray foam on the inside, it's solid core. And then of course you can get a solid core wood door with both particle 
and wood blocks. This is probably the the cheap dot door. You really you don't want this. If it ever gets wet, this is going to swell up and you're going to have problems, problems, problems. So I've posted a couple of things here, how to, how to install a pre-hung door. Um, S-T-I-L-E, there you go. I -S -T, uh, so style and rail door. So uh, take a look at these before you try the, uh, the quiz on there. And uh, if you have any questions whatsoever, by all means, don't hesitate to uh, let me know. And uh, I will post this and hopefully you can look back over it and understand it a little bit more. Sam, I hope you warm up, girl. You look like you're about to freeze there. <laughs> Goodness gracious. All right, guys. Have a good one, and today is Wednesday, so I will I will talk with you again on Monday, and we'll go over whatever's next. I forgot whatever's next. So anyway, have a great weekend, and we'll talk to you guys later. Thank you. Thank you.